Hello everyone. Today we are going to see how to get the data sets from S3 and get CSV data residing in S3. So what we'll do is that we'll download those S3 files and do some basic data modeling in Spark and then form nodes and edges in Neo4j. Neo4j is this amazing graph database management system. According to various sources, it is currently said to be one of the most popular graph database management uh, uh, system. So here we have a Neo4j. I'm going to start a Neo4j instance. Um, I am using a Neo4j of version 3.4.0. Interesting thing to notice is that it has a bold port apart from the usual uh, HTTP port that we have. I can open this HTTP port and I can see the Neo4j, uh, I can see my Neo4j database in my browser. It currently has no nodes and labels. Uh, apart from this, there is the bold port. Neo4j is basically implemented in Java and accessible from software written in other languages. In this case, we have Scala using the Cypher query language through a transactional HTTP port uh, and through the binary BOLD protocol. The BOLD protocol was basically designed for Neo4j. Now, in this case, I have a uh, CSV of the GDELT project which is basically free cloud based service that has um, a plethora of event uh, events in their own database uh, so I have some sample data here you can see that it has some information uh, for this video we are interested in the first column and uh, basically the 15th column which has the place uh, in which uh, the events are mapped to basically i will be taking a look at this specific file uh, in s3 now to parse the CSV in Spark, we open the Spark shell. My Spark version right now is uh, 2.3.1. I am adding various uh, dependencies such as uh, a, the main ones are AWS Java SDK of version 1.7.4, uh, Hadoop AWS, AWS uh, dependency with version 2.7.5.1, and for the Neo4j, we have the Neo4j Spark connector, which is 2.1.0 uh, of M4. I will also need to use my AWS secret ID and AWS keys, which I've already activated in this specific terminal. Without this, I'll not be able to access my AWS uh, S3 console. If you are doing this for the first time, it should download a lot of uh, uh, jar files. But in my case, since I've already downloaded the jar files, it should spin up my Spark shell. Now I have the Spark context available and the Spark session available. So let's get to the code. I will have a variable called lines which is basically a text file of the
so in this case this is an s3 so what i will write is that it's an s3a file uh, what is s3a so i'll bring your attention to this uh, stack overflow post which is that the letter changing in the URI scheme makes a big difference basically um, the difference between s3 and s3 uh, and s3 is that s3 is a block based overlay on top of amazon s3 while s3 and s3 are not they are object based the difference between s3 and an s3 is that s3 and supports objects up to 5 gigabytes in size while s3a supports objects up to 5 terabytes and has higher performance <clears throat> s3a is a successor to s3n so we'll be using the s3a format this creates my rdd now to get the filtered parts of the column i will create a variable called filtered lines which is basically mapping two lines where i will split each line with my tab delimiter which is my delimiter in this case and then i will map this again where each line corresponds to the first element and the 15th element or the sorry the 16th element now when once we have this filtered rdd we will create a data frame where uh, of course first i need to define the names of the columns so it's a sequence uh, first column will be the event second column is the place so my data frame will be uh, filtered lines i will transform it to a data frame where the new names get set as the names now that i have my uh, data frame what i will do is i will try to see if this is somewhat correct so looks like it's fine now that we have the data frame we can push to neo4j to be able to push to push to neo4j we will need to import or dot neo4j dot spark dot everything and import r dot graph frames dot everything so now focus on the next code that we are going to write uh, we have a neo4j data frame uh, saying that you should be expecting which is saying that you should expect a data frame so we will do a merge edge list uh, the spark context and the data frame where the connection stems from um, the event namespace uh saying that this is basically a sequence from the data frame of event uh, and the connection is happened in which is the property is empty 
and we'll say that it's the next namespace is place which is calling from the data frame place now we run this this should take up a lot of time uh, we'll skip the video at this moment as you can see once you're done the nodes and edges show up in the database so i can open the place namespace and basically it will show all the connections that happen thanks for watching this video in case you are interested in machine learning and nlp uh, do check out uh, my recent book on fast text which is this amazing library for efficient word representations and sentence classification do share and subscribe to my channel uh, for more spark videos have a great day. Bye.